I'm Bob Stone, the chair of the Underhill Select Board. I'm going to call this regular scheduled select board meeting to order. Uh, today is the 8th of August. It is now one minute after six. Are there any adjustments to the agenda that has been provided? Hearing and seeing none, we will go to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, public comment. Is there anyone here that would have any comment? We have folks in the virtual world and we have folks here, so. Pat Sabalas in the virtual world. Hi, Pat. Good to see Greetings. you. Nice to see you all. I am. I understand that the town has engaged someone to take care of the gardens in front of town hall, which I think is a great idea. Um, and I don't know, maybe you've already done something, but in the event you haven't, I think that, or I would like to see the town recognize Donna Johnson for her many years of volunteer work on the gardens around town hall, many years. And I guess for one reason or another, she had to step away from that this year. So I hope the town can recognize her, I don't know, by a resolution or something, or naming a garden after her, I don't know, but I hope you'll think about it. Well, thanks for bringing that to our attention. I'm, I know I wasn't aware, but there may be others here that were aware, so thank you. I just yeah. want to add that Pat also has done her fair share of uh, maintenance on the garden as well so yeah but not your... nearly as many as long as donna donna's i don't know how many years she's been doing it but thank you brad any other public comment all right moving on to the next item which is uh the crosswalk follow-up report and line striping russ clark good evening um as you recall from our last meeting, we brought up, or I brought up about crosswalk signage and so on. And I'm, I'm happy that we kind of put it off and did some more research because the research was uh, very valuable. I learned a lot of information about crosswalks and signage. And um, so it was a good thing that we stepped back and, and uh, researched this a little further. So in your packet, um, you'll notice a list of our nine crosswalks within the town of Underhill. And I uh, have them numbered out. Uh, but I met with Joe Kelly from VTrans, the sign division, um, who has been with VTrans for, uh, I think, about 30 years now. And um, I get a very knowledgeable man and a great resource to have gained uh, from reaching out to him. Um, so basically, in a, and I think it might take a little bit of time to go over this, but I think it's going to be time well spent and very important time uh, to keep everybody's safety in, in mind. Um, we basically have two crosswalks out of the nine that are legal. And that one, the first one is at the end of Metal Lane at the intersection of Route 15, which is up just past the fire station. And on Park Street, which I call Blanchard's apartment, but it's on the corner where you have to stop. You can go to Underhill, you can go to Jericho. Russ, can you explain what a legal crosswalk is? Sure. So a legal crosswalk um, has to, <laughs> one of the big things is it has to have, I got I can never remember the name of it, but it's a destination. Uh, well, that's one of the things, but um, hang on a second. I have it in one of my uh, post office one truncated domes on each end of it, the beginning and the end or whatever you want to, each end of the crosswalk, which is a cast iron. Most of them are cast iron, but there are a bunch of little bumps on them for the visually impaired. And those are a requirement on crosswalks. So it's not a, it's not a function of, of the roads that are crossing and traffic conditions. We can put a crosswalk anywhere we wanted? No, we cannot. Okay. You have to have a destination. Um, for example, uh, the end of Park Street at River Road. Mm -hmm. It comes off the sidewalk on the Jericho side and goes to the corner of the cemetery. If you look at, I thought there was a, at the, at the sidewalk on the Jericho side, I thought there was a lead off from that. 
but there is not a lead. It's just dirt. It's like grass and dirt and looks like a maybe somebody dug it out or made it. It's just dirt. The sidewalk actually makes a corner around that corner and heads towards Jacob's door, heads down towards the school. Um, but it has to have a destination on the opposite side. There's no destination. It would have to have a sidewalk um, at least 10 to 12 feet long that it, it attaches to that crosswalk. Has to have has to have a destination. Like the one across from the town hall, the destination, it comes from the parking area at Moore Park, but when it comes across the road, it comes right into a parking lot. So a destination, that is not a destination. You don't want to lead somebody from somewhere into a parking lot. You'd have to, in this instance, you'd have to put a, a sidewalk from there if you want it to go to the door, something raised to get it to the door. So that's a few things about a, a, a crosswalk. Can you uh, say, identify more the post office crosswalk? What makes that what it is? So the, cro the crosswalk at the, the post office, which is number four, um, does have signage. It's not real visible coming from both ways, but it does have signage, um, but does not have the truncated domes, which, and really it's going to a parking area. So you got parking areas on both sides of that road. So you really have a, a crosswalk going from a parking area to a parking area. And that's, it's just not, it's really not safe. He did understand more of the, the one at the post office, and he wasn't really concerned about the one at the post office, but you would want to consider, we should consider putting truncated domes. But the more I think about the post office, it's not leading to anything. It's leading to two parking areas, which you don't want to lead somebody from a parking area to a parking area. But he thought in that area, and because of the speed limit, and coming from a stop sign just up the road, that it it's kind of double-sided here but it's like he thought it was okay but then he's like it's really not legal so it's and because there is a lot of people crossing right there many times a day versus the other crossing crosswalks in town there's really not a lot of crossing if that makes sense so so if you don't have the, um, I forget the term that you used. Truncated domes. Truncating domes. And, it, and if it goes to something other than a parking area, then it would be legal. But you have to have those two components in order to make it legal. Correct. It actually goes from a parking area to an official building, not just a parking area. It goes to a ramp that is the entrance. But there's also, a, I believe there is a handicapped parking area right in front of that as well. That if, if a car is parked in that area, it would probably be right on the crosswalk. The, the handicapped area actually is on the side of the building. I think there's a sign right on the fence, I believe. There is. I don't have. I don't have a picture of that one. Um, Page seven. So, so, so really, what what we can do in this case is instead of having painted crosswalks, he recommended having signage. So, if you look at uh, well, let's look at town hall which is number six. And in your, there's pictures, should be pictures in your packet of the, of the crosswalk sign, which is a person walking. And then below that, so I have it, have one at across the road in front of the apartment house across the road, and it'll say next 500 feet. And then there'd be a sign down by the Beartown Bridge on the opposite end by the church that has one for cars coming from that direction and it covers that area of 500 feet. 
there's anybody could be walking. So I'm thinking anybody parked at Moore Park from either parking area that might be crossing to come to the town hall for a voting event or an occasion going on here or something like that, that they could cross anywhere between those signs and that covers us legality wise that there's a sign there and says for the next 500 feet you have people potentially crossing but there, would be. there would be no cross okay that was my clarification no there's no painted you wouldn't cross. have the painted strips it would just be like this zone of the road Correct. is all considered a pedestrian walk Correct. area that you, okay so then if you move up the road to the, the old town of the old schoolhouse that leads from the, the one there leads from the school old schoolhouse across to, into the driveway on the other side of the road and then when you go up to the top of the hill there's one that crosses pleasant valley road and there's one that crosses our settlement road my feeling is that there's one going across pleasant valley road to get people from the school I've heard something about a trail that goes down through the woods to the town pond. I'm thinking that's why there might be one there. I don't know that for sure, but nothing legal of nothing legal about them. So the idea was also putting signage from uh, just prior to the old schoolhouse here to the end of the schoolyard, same signage as would be down here that say next 1,000 feet, and that covers that whole area. So is that your recommendation is not to paint and then put in the signage? So my uh, so if you look at each one, my recommendation is there uh, for each crosswalk to, um, like the one on Park Street, we do need to add some signage. And if it's at like the end of, um, Metal Lane, if it's at a stop, and the same thing on Park Street, if it's at a stop bar, there's no signage required on that side. It does, does not require. And those, those, all the, that stuff was done in conjunction with um, the sidewalk project, which is a federal aid project, so that meets all the standards. That's why those are the two legal ones we have. I'm really concerned that, I think Russ's idea is great, I'm concerned with if we have crosswalks in there, someone gets hit thinking they're safe in the crosswalk and it's not legal, it's, it's no different than a speed limit sign or a stop sign. If you don't have the ordinance or the or the, the law doesn't back it up, it's unenforceable. Okay, so is that your report? Unless you have some questions, but it's all written out where... So I'm gonna move that we accept the report as provided and that we um, go with the recommendations um, provided in the packet so that we can have a discussion on that. So I'm going to accept it and move that we accept the recommendations to the tune of $1,272.06. Is there a second? I'll second that. So now is there a discussion on the board? <clears throat> yeah, I the the section from the post office to the town hall, this this area, having that basically a general extended crosswalk makes me worry i don't know it just it, it seems like um certainly in some cities where there's a crosswalk and people as soon as people step on the crosswalk traffic will slow down and respect that but whereas if we have a really long broad extended area i just don't know that cars will respect it i'm concerned about that from the safety aspect whereas if we have a very delineated you know, from the town hall to across to Moore Park, right here in front, it's very delineated, is painted. People tend to respect those painted areas where a general long area I'm concerned about from a safety perspective for pedestrians. Yeah, and my recommendation was based on making what we have now legal. And if, if we wanted to add crosswalks, that would take budgeted I know probably a budgeted item to make them a legal crosswalk yeah maybe what we do is designate the entire area and then for the next budget cycle we put in specific dollars and really beef it up because I'm worried about kids crossing and if they if they can go to us very bright crosswalk traffic will stop 
whereas if it's just Mamby Pamby general, I'm just worried about that. So maybe we do it in two stages. I have a similar concern about the one in front of the school along Pleasant Valley. Um, there are kids that will like ride their bike through the meadow and then cross over right there. And without having, a, and like I know we are, it, it's a school zone, but I, the same idea, like if the whole, but I understand like it's not legal. Um, so I, I think that might be another one that down the road we probably need to think about adding a way to, I mean, we're not going to add a whole sidewalk along. Pleasant Valley, but what it would take to think about making that an illegal crosswalk um, so it can have a more visible sign. Because I agree, like the traffic slowing and traffic calming is part of why you want those crosswalks um, or designated safer crossing areas. Um, but we don't want to run into the problem of having unenforceable signs that don't mean anything. So, yeah. I have two comments. First, I um, thank you, Russ, for your comprehensive uh, analysis of this whole thing. Very helpful. Second, to Brad's point, one of the things that we don't want to do is give pedestrians a false sense of security. You know, if we have signage there and, and, and you know, they think, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the boss of the road here, and the car has its different ideas. Unfortunately, um, even though they ought to respect pedestrians no matter where they are, um, it just puts us in an awkward situation if somebody does get in an accident and gets hurt. Um, and I don't know what our liability is, but if we purposely give a false sense of security, that may be... Um, one of the items we need to to uncover. Any other discussion? Russ, did you, um, in your uh, investigation in this, look at the traffic blinking lights where people can push a button and it does a bright strobe? No, no, I did not do any investigation on them. Uh, I did have a lady, I think she lives on Stevensville, had called about wanting to have one put up. It was mm -hmm. like the day after, or Monday after our last meeting. I got back to her and said that we were just discussing crosswalks and what we were going to do with our crosswalks and make them legal and so on. Mm -hmm. But when I really found out that, you know, meeting with Joe, that our crosswalks are, you know, not even legal, um, I wanted to bring to you folks mm -hmm. what would make our crossing areas legal. Um, and then if we wanted to move forward at another time to, to add crosswalks, then we could, but we have to remember that they have to have a destination. A crosswalk has to have a destination. And with a destination, it has to be, they have to be raised, they have to be, the domes have to be there, they have to be signed correctly, and so on. So it, it will be, and I'm not saying it's not worth it, it will mm -hmm. be an expensive. Uh, Agreed venture to do that and it might come in to to play when sidewalks are That's exactly if, what if the sidewalk thing transpires right. then that would be the time to do crosswalks where the town wants crosswalks my oh sorry my only other thought on the um crosswalk sort of the crosswalk zones as opposed to specific crosswalks is it might in conjunction with that i think trying to do some sort of like a public safety education campaign of whether it's on our Facebook and front porch forum of kind of reminding people. I don't think that the zones are as frequently understood of what that would mean. And I think if when we are in the ready to implement, put up those signs, I think probably doing some sort of a public education push in conjunction with that would be uh, helpful. Brad likes to take pictures. He probably could take some pictures or we could probably put something in the paper or something. Sure. I don't want to. I don't want to go to the. I don't want to go to the dark side. But you know what I. <laughs> what I envision is is you know take a worst case scenario, right? God forbid um, someone gets hit in one of these crosswalks, and the lawyer defending the driver, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to hire um, an expert, and they're going to look at their mm -hmm. uh, look at the crosswalk and say that's not even close to being legal. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Then is the town out of liability for creating a space to cross? That's what you need to answer. Exactly. You ask yourself. Exactly. Um, I did talk, I was talking with our sidewalk, um, one of our meetings, and Russ was kind of dealing with this, and I brought it up to her, Lucy Gibson, that came and did the presentation for us. Mm -hmm. And she said she's actually seen, because all these crosswalks are leading from grass to grass, right? Every crosswalk you see, there's either a sidewalk on each side and it's crossing, right? So she did know, she said that you could have a sort of a pad, and maybe this is something, a question for uh, Joe, is like, even if there was a, a semblance of some sort of a sidewalk, like a pad, a concrete pad, where the truncated dome could be located and a crosswalk mm -hmm. into another area where there's another pad, I know it's like once you get off the pad, there's no destination. But right. it, maybe the de maybe the pad constitutes a destination. A destination, exactly. Right. So that's just one idea that she had. Park bench to park bench. She said, "There you go." So, are you ready for the question? So we're voting on a sign package in the amount of one thousand two hundred seventy-two dollars and six cents. Does Except that include the? The knock me down sign out front. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. What do they have to say about that? No, so so basically um, signage is priority, painting is secondary. Okay. And they do not require the stand up signs. They are an option for the town if they wanted to put um, okay. one of those up. So I did some research. <laughs> um, and found that they do make one that bolts to the ground. With some other discussions with other people, that, that's they're fine for the first year. After that, when you because we have to take we'll have to take them out. Right. For plowing. When you try to put them back in in the spring, it doesn't always go well because the holes in the ground get filled with salt and dirt, and it's it's a, a very big hassle. So the, the stand-up ones that get hit and moved and would, if we were going to do something like that. But however, those have to be in a crosswalk. So if we have it as a general crossing area, that doesn't count? No, they have to be in a crosswalk. Yeah, I was a told that. Crosswalk. A legal crosswalk and in the center of the road. Right, I was told that by the sheriff as well. Any more discussion? Are you ready for the question? So there's two parts. First part is to accept the report as presented, and then the second part is um, to um, approve the expenditure of $1,272.06. So um, without objection, we'll have one vote. Hearing no objections. All those in favor of the motion as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Next item. Uh, discuss developing a stop sign ordinance. No, you got some line striping quotes, don't you? Yeah. Oh. So that was I'm just sorry. signage. Now we gotta go to paint. Right. <laughs> so Sorry, I got ahead of myself. So last Thursday, I received a quote from uh, Frank's Line Striping and L&D Safety Markings, but didn't have it in time to get into last uh, last the last meeting. So what I did is basically took the list uh, that we've done in the past for stop bars, uh, crosswalks, uh, school zone, and stop ahead painting and got the quotes from these two companies. I reached out to four companies, and these are the only two that um, I could get to propose a quote to do this. Frank's Line Striping is who the town has used for, I don't know how many years, but since I've been here, at least the last two years. Um, do a very good job. But working, again, working with Joe Kelly, um, Uh, stop bars are not required unless it was something that was done through a state project that 
we agreed as the town to keep painting stop bars. And stop bars, or just so everybody's aware of what a stop bar is, it's a big two foot wide, doesn't look two foot in your car, but two foot by the whole width of the road, so 11 feet, um, and the word stop written. So that's where you are to stop to look, see if any cars are coming. Uh, but they are not required. Again, I'll go back to signage is priority, painting is secondary. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, those quotes are based off all of our crosswalks, all of our stop bars that we've always painted, which are not all the roads. They're just certain roads, they're not all of them. Um, so those are the quotes for that. However, so after this report, we would not need to paint all the crosswalks. We would only have to paint the legal crosswalks. And my feeling is that the stop bars in most locations don't last long. So it, my feeling is it's a waste of money. Um, so my recommendation on that memo to you folks is to paint the stop bars as listed and continue to put stop ahead in the Underhill Center in the intersection up here and the school zone. I think the having it in the school zone is a good idea. Mm -hmm. So that drops our estimate from $4,070 to $1,615. That's my recommendation. So for the sake of argument, I'm going to move that we accept the line striping um, quote as presented and that we move on the recommendation of Rust for $1,615. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, ready for the question? Without objection, we'll move them both accepting the report and um, the recommendation of an expenditure of $1,615. Not hearing any objections. So all those in favor of accepting the report <laughs> and the expenditure, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Now is it safe to move on to the stop sign ordinance? I just want to make a note um, for their next budget that I'd like to revisit the crosswalks and sidewalks and beef those up so we can encourage people to cross safely and do more to, to boost the visibility. So just a heads up that I'll be bringing that up. Got a photographic memory, that guy right there. He won't forget. <laughs> Ready to go on? Stop, stop sign ordinance by Brad. Go ahead, Brad. Take it away. So this is something that um, Pat Savalas had kind of spearheaded back when she was on the select board, and and she lit a fire under us for the for our speed limit ordinance, which um, and kind of drafted a kind of an all inclusive document that covers all our roads for our speed limits. And we went through that ordinance process and um, our sheriff's department, like once they use it as a model, they're going, this is the way every town should have their ordinance. You bring that into court, it's very defendable. Um, it's a good document. So, so while we're on this, while Russ was on the stop bar um, crosswalk um, issues, I thought, you know, the stop sign, this would be a good time to bring up the stop sign ordinance or just start the conversation. So it makes sense to Pat and it makes perfect sense to me that if there was a stop sign violation, whether it was an accident or, or whatever, um, that we'd have to have an accurate accounting of where our stop signs are. Um, so the public is aware where they are. Um, and I haven't talked this over with Russ yet, but, um, but um, Pat kind of started a draft here of like, she just included all town roads, but, my recommendation would be to, um, you know, to have Russ go through and and see where what stop signs are necessary and do we need to add any more or if we have added more, make sure we capture those 
get a really accurate inventory of the of the signs um and then you know once we're happy with that document pass this document off to vlct which is our insurance company um i don't think we need to go through the town's attorney we could do double duty um and then bring it back to you all to adopt so once you adopt the ordinance then we post it in the paper five places around town 60 days goes by it's in effect so then we have a document that shows so currently we have this mix match of i think the last stop sign ordinance was done when i was on the select board and dan we uh the one on irish and sand hill i think was a stop sign that was placed there so we went through the ordinance process and you know that statutory process to put that stop sign there um, we've got a couple really old ones for they're so old that they refer to like the old bolton road and stuff like that you know that went through the range so they're they're pretty old and i just think having an accurate accounting on one document is the way to go um thank you russ is um do you how long do you think it would take you to review this and report back to the board I could probably have it done Saturday morning after checking the roads. <laughs> so, uh, so it wouldn't take. So by hours. the by the next select board meeting, you think you'd be able to have um, recommendation back to us as far as um, what we would want to consider? Absolutely. So without objection, if it's a consensus, then we'll move to have Russ review the document and go around town to make sure that we're not missing any stop signs, so then we can have a further discussion on the document, but it seems like Russ needs an opportunity to review it. And thanks for uh, Pat and Brad's work on this question. to move us along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we did get a recent request too on Downs Road and Poker Hill, I think, for a stop sign. So that was another thing that kind of triggered this whole process. So we'll do that. So Dan has a question. Just the end process. Um, we adopt this we don't have to have a public hearing given that it's right more. well the so yes we'd have the hearing would be during a select board meeting and then after you took public comment or feedback then you'd adopt the policy we don't have to have two public hearings i don't believe so okay i believe it can be done in one meeting if we warn the final document and you, you have the hearing where people can speak other than public comment but speak directly to the ordinance and um and then you could consider the comments and then and then either choose to amend or adopt the ordinate ordinance as you submitted it or presented it thank you but i'll check on that for sure we want to do it right yep at, at this time could we also do i know like at least one area that doesn't have any stop or yield and that would be on Meadow Lane and Sugar Hill. Would that be a time that we could look at those areas as well? Because what it is, you have blacktop that goes straight up, and you have Meadow Lane that goes off to the left, and it's just it's a Y, and there's there's nothing. At, there's, a yield that's come down. there's no yield there. I came out. I came today. Dog tracks up or tracks up on Meadow Lane, and I was coming. Out of metal lane and turning right to go down that lane where that door comes down, and there was a car coming. There is my mistake. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, so, I, I so, think Jumper's right. I remember. No, that's that. fine. I, I guess. I just, I never really that. I happen to be there today. So I'm glad you said something. Thank it, you. I appreciate the feedback, um, but if you're going to address. Please step up to the microphone and adjust yourself so that everybody can hear you because the acoustics in here, people may not be able to hear you. So not that I don't want to hear you. Um, I don't have a problem hearing you, but people, when this gets recorded, may not be able to hear you. So um, if you could be wait to be recognized and then we can get you on the record so that it's all good. Thank you. Well, uh, I'll double check the protocol about how we can go about this. If we want to add new ones or if we just have to deal with our old ones first and amend the ordinance. I'll figure that out. I don't think I'm stepping out of bounds when um, 
when it comes time for you to make your final recommendation, Russ, that if you have roles that are not in the report that you'd like to have considered, given your position, I think that that would be valid and important. Okay, and I just wanted, do we have a yield sign ordinance? Is that a separate? Good question. I don't I know. Mean, while we're doing but, the work, it, well, no, it might be a good yeah, time. Now, to, now's the time. It's like another, gonna... it's, it's another, like if someone failed to yield and there was an accident, it'd be the same, same scenario. So that right. makes perfect sense. I would think that if you wanted to add any signs, you know, we do our existing signs. If you wanted to add any new signs, you'd have to do that after the ordinance had gone through its appeal period. Don't, and you, don't lose focus of the yield, but focus on the stop. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, come back with, the chart, okay. you know, chart. as a sidebar, but that's focus on stop for now. Okay. Here. Are we good with that? If so, we can move on to the next we item. We're it. almost on time and on it's schedule. Um, except the uh, SY25 Grants and Aid Award GA0912. Yeah, so this is our grants and aid. Um, we just got this grant um, proposal or agreement for $17,750 of which we have a match of 4,000 for 37.50. And the great thing about these, um, these grants is um, it allows Russ's crew to do work like you saw in Lower English Settlement. We can use our time and our equipment as the match. So it's a no brainer. Um, I would recommend that you authorize that me to sign this and, and um, the, this is for uh, next year, really. It, it will it'll be effective. Um, uh, it's actually effective July 1, but the the end award date is September 30th, 25. So, so I'll move so we can discuss. Um, I'll move that we accept the grant as presented. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Ready for the question? All those in favor of accepting the grant proposal as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries four to zero. Just as a little side note, I think we, when I first got on, we were a little out of cycle with some of these grants, but now that this one has come, I talked over Jennifer, and I think we could use this as revenue in the budget so we have an accounting. Typically, we don't put these grants in the budget. Um, we were just out of, we were just in a weird cycle, but now we're back on track. So it makes sense to use this as revenue. So we have an accounting of it. Next item, the review of the class four road study committee report and set a date for a public hearing. So the board accepted a report from the class four road study committee several months ago. Um, since that time we've had some additions and changes to the board. So um, this document has come forward um, and looking for action to move forward with it. So uh, I believe the next item would be for the board to uh, set a date to hold a public hearing based upon the recommendations in that report. So when would you like to do that? We talked last time, we kind of set a date. I would like to say a few things about some of the, um, just kind of bring it back around to some of the history of, I, I wanted to prepare like a introduction to class four roads for those of you that are not familiar with the history of them, but I could give just a quick brief overview if you want, um, or if you want to meet with me offline, I can do that too. It, it's your choice. Um, but I think we can you do it in less than six hours? I can do it in about five minutes. Okay. Um, I think we were kind of looking at the 29th of August last time. That's a Thursday. Right. It's an off Thursday. Patty likes to go to the Champagne Valley Fair. 
I'm good if, if people want to set the 29th um, as a public hearing for that, if everyone else is. Yep, works for me as the well. The sacrifice is, is real. Six o'clock. Dan, are you okay with that? Yeah, I am okay with that, 29th to 6. That was easy. Okay. I think Scary Dan easy. Kelsey might still be out of town, but we'll have enough people to for a quorum um, if that's the case. So we should be okay. So if you just wanted a quick overview of six hours or less, yeah. how so class four roads didn't always exist, right? Classification of highways didn't always exist. So we've been keeping track of mileage, and I included a mileage map in your packet. So we keep track of mileage because we get state aid to highway funds. So for every mile of highway we have, um, we get a certain amount of money. Um, so in the early days, 1931 was the first year of classification, or not of classification, but of mileage maps. So they were pretty crude, really crude maps. Um, they didn't even really give you a lot of information. They were just, and they didn't necessarily, they just basically had a town highway number and um, a rough mileage, and they all looked the same. The lines all looked the same. Um, then as the, the maps kind of evolved, um, we got into talking about whether, uh, what, kind of, what kind of road it was it? Was it a paved road? Was it surface treated? Was it a gravel road? Um, was it an unimproved road? Was it graded and drained. So there's kind of some of these general categories that they used to, and, and some of them were like untraveled, um, primitive, were some of the other terminology they used. So in 1974, the legislature decided, well, we need to, um, towns need to classify their highways. And um, that's really when the class four road was born. Um, so, so prior to so prior to seventy four, the town kind of had an obligation to maintain all town highways, right? They're all kind of the same. But that year, the legislature um, decided that the select boards had to classify their roads, and then that system of classification would determine the stand the statutory maintenance obligations um, for any given road. Class four roads were treated differently right off the bat in 74. But just to go over classification quick, um, it's pretty simple. A class one highway, we don't have any in this town, but it basically it's the extension of a state highway. So say a state highway just kind of ends and then goes into a town highway, that would be a class, hang on, that would be a class one highway. So we don't have any of those. Class two highways are, are deemed some of the most important in town. Um, so the class two highway we have basically is Park Street, River Road, Pleasant Valley, which is town highway one, the whole loop. So that, that's a class two highway. It enables us to get grants, uh, paving grants, because it's a little more higher priority. It's a thoroughfare through town. So class three roads are basically all travel town highways other than one or two. But um, we are obligated uh, to maintain all class one, two, and three highways during three seasons of the year, or all, all seasons of the year, um, travelable by a pleasure vehicle is the way the statute kind of reads. So class four highways are all other town highways that are not class one, two, or three and we do not receive state aid from them. So I added something in your packet, which was called a mileage certificate. And this is something the select board has to do every year is certify to the mileage. And, I, and last year was kind of a unique situation because as you'll see, there's a little asterisk under class four and there's, um, we added some mileage of class four. Well, we didn't reclassify a road to class four, but basically we discovered a little short section of highway, town highway 20, 
um, which we named Iron Kettle Lane, I think, or Iron Kettle Road. It's two tenths of a, basically, or 14 hundredths of a mile. It was mistakenly um, designated as class three, but we don't do any maintenance on it. So the correct process is to reclassify that highway as a class four highway, and then, and then potentially it could be discontinued. Um, but the quick fix is, since we want to be honest with the state, we basically added that mileage to our class four highways. So, so basically we subtracted that from our state aid. So it's really, so it's called what's called the NUTS or NUTS for short is not up to standard. Um, and that's what it says right on the highway map. I'm not making this up, but it's what it is. So we have a short section on the mountain road past the gate, um, on, uh, by the state park, that's actually class three highway all the way. And that little section is not the standard. However, now it probably is because there's been some work done on it. But that's how we keep track of um, mileage. Um, let's see, what else did I wanna say? Well, also there's another classification system which are legal trails. So, and legal trails are done through a classification, reclassification process, and the town has no statutory obligation to maintain those. Um, so that's basically kind of a little bit of the history of the class four road. I can get in very deep, um, Act 178, which was the Ancient Road Act, um, really changed things. Um, basically, uh, still being tested in court, but as of a certain date, we had to identify all town highways on our map. And the idea being that any town highway that didn't show up on the map wasn't a town highway. But that's, that's kind of a long discussion. But I just wanted to say that I think that I was part of the, or I staffed the Class 4 Road Committee. And I think they all did a, a great job. We, we visited every road, every Class 4 road. Um, site visit, took pictures, analysis, um, and that's, and after many, many meetings and debate, this is the, the final report. So, so I would recommend that any member of the board that would like to receive more of a briefing, um, schedule a time with you, Brad, to um, get familiar with these documents and more of the history. I know Dan's not here tonight, so might be good for Dan to uh, have that opportunity to have a little bit of education um, and to, I guess, reiterate. So we're meeting on the 29th at six o'clock. Um, can you please ask Rick Hay um, if he's available to be present as uh, I believe he chaired the, the committee. So I'd like to have, I'd like to ask that he be present. Um, so if there's any in-depth questions that uh, we're not prepared to answer or you are having a moment or something mm -hmm. happens to you. We have, we'll have another person that was there type of thing. And then uh, I don't know if we really should have asked Dan Mance to be here as the moderator, if we're going to have a public hearing or if we think we sure. can handle it our own. But um, if you could ask for Rick and Dan to be here. It's a good idea. Um, because it's not a meeting of the board, it's a hearing. Well, it's a meeting of the board, but it's the only thing on the agenda. Right. right? So. And I think it would be helpful if Dan could run it, and then that, that way members of the board could listen to what people have to say. And then I don't know if we're necessarily going to deliberate after the hearing, but it would just give everyone an opportunity to use active listening skills. Sounds good. Anything else you want to talk Thank about you in for class that four? Overview, Brad. No. What's Thank that? you. Thank you for that overview. Oh, though. yeah. This no is very helpful. And it can go, we could talk for days. Um, so, um, yeah, that's all I have. So it's 6.50. So uh, the next <laughs> next item on the agenda is the review and consider approving the updates to the Underhill personnel policy. I know that there was a revision to that policy that the board has not um, discussed in detail. So I don't know if you want to deliberate in open session or if you want to do that in executive session. So we should probably have that conversation before we move forward. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer and I worked on the 
handbook, the employee handbook to make revisions to it. And um, our attorney, attorney's name is John Klesch. And the revisions that are in the handbook in front of you, um, edits were made by John were for legal um, changes that needed to be updated. So anything that was law-based, he did insert changes related to that. And we can go through each item to say this one is a legal issue. It, it's been updated for current statute and any changes that are based on law. There are some other changes that we made based on discussions um, over the last 10 months. I'm happy to go through that. And there's another change that happened relative to feedback at the employee meeting roughly a week and a half ago. And we can talk about that, go through each one. But I would recommend we stay in public session. Um, I'm not seeing the changes that are in writing as um, a personnel matter to go into executive session. If there's anything that trigger, triggers an executive session, we can. But in terms of what is in front of us, I don't see it as an executive session. Okay. Item. So for the sake of argument, I'm going to move that we accept the personnel policy as presented. Um, is there a second? I'll second that. So is there is there any discussion based upon the, um, this is basically the final draft? I, I would like to highlight the one change that reached the uh, in the reach the in, in track changes in your packet and it's in blue in our um, in our version. It's on PDF page. Let me get there. PDF page ninety six in our packet. And this is page 22 of that specific document, correct? It's actually page 19 of the document. Ah, okay, thank you. It should show up in blue. Mm. Let me know when you are I'm all testing there. my technological skills today. That's okay. It's, it's, 90, it's 96 in the scan document. In the, in the scan PDF. But it's page 19 of the policy. Yes. Yep, gotcha. The very bottom of page 19 of the personnel policy, we had listed uh, for schedule of hours of service for high, the highway department in the summer to be between June 1st and September 30th. Two things came up with that specific date was that June 1st could be a Wednesday and September 30th could be somewhere midweek and it would make more sense to uh, keep it as part of the pay structure. So the change of beginning with the first peri pay period of that month and then the last pay period of the month. So that was the reason for the change, moving it from the first, moving away from June 1st to the September 30th date, moving the first and the 30th. And then we also heard that the summer schedule for the highway department is actually starts in May. The work starts in May for an extended uh, time period, 10, 10 hour days, and it can go through October. So I've changed it for our consideration in this version of the policy to create the summer schedule to be the first pay period of May through the last pay period of October. Okay, anything else? And then the other change that we made um, was relative employee feedback, relative to uh, vacation time and existing employees receiving a lump sum. So we've basically grandfathered existing employees and then created a new schedule for anybody who comes on board after August of 2024, when they would accrue time um, as they earn it on a, on a years of service basis. Those are the two significant changes for our consideration. Everything else I think we've talked about. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Uh, I just wanted to make a comment and thanking Patty and Dan and Jennifer on meeting with everybody and kind of talking through the the whole policy with the town employees and how much I appreciate the town employees and the members of the select board that were able to meet together to make sure that we were all on the same page and that, um, that everybody could be 
happy and work with um, with this update. So I just appreciate everyone's time and work on that. So thank you very much. Thank you for that comment, Maureen. And the other thing that just, and I'll reiterate it, I've said this in the, in the past um, few weeks that anytime we make a change to the personnel policy, we should have an employee meeting just to let folks know. So I just want to put that on the record. So in the event we change seats, somebody um, else is here just for one of us that would be uh, continuing in our seats as select board member. Any change to the personnel policy should just be run by the employee group as a FYI to get feedback in case we goof something up. Okay, ready for the any more discussion? Yeah. I have an implementation question on the dates for the summer schedule. Is that the first full pay, pay period in May? In other words, the, the first one that encapsulizes all two Correct. weeks? Correct. Yes, the first full pay period. Okay. Right. So if a pay period had any, just to be clear, any of the pay period had any days in April, that wouldn't count. Right. Same thing on the other end. Exactly. You know, if there are any days in October that, you know, run into, you know, November, that wouldn't count. Correct. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Ready for the question? All those in favor of implementing the Underhill personnel policy as presented effective on tomorrow's date, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Ooh. We'll sign that uh, tonight and it'll go into effect tomorrow. Um, Next item on the agenda is the Essex Rescue Budget Status Report. Um, I received this uh, report from Essex Rescue from Colleen. Um, I'm not prepared to answer questions that you may have. Um, I'm simply bringing the information forward. If you have questions as it relates to the document, then I would ask Brad to contact a representative from Essex Rescue so that they can be present to answer any questions that you have, but it was meant as informational for you so that when it comes time for budget season, you're aware of what's going on with Essex Rescue and their and their budget. Because there has been in the past significant increases to their budget for various reasons, um, and so felt like we should be kept informed and they're trying to do that. So I appreciate them keeping us informed. Is it worth noting that they're running significantly in the red for the report stands for itself. Yeah. I'm not I'm yeah. not gonna take questions. Um if the board wants to have a uh, representative from Essex Rescue again to come forward um to answer questions about their financial status, then we can certainly ask them to come forward so that they can talk to us about that. But I'm not prepared nor do I want to comment on their budget. It's not mine. Good. Next item, uh, closing public comment period. Tom is online. I don't know, Tom, if you have anything. Tom, Tom is with Tom's MCTV. With us. Oh, well, hi, Tom. I didn't know you were with MCTV, but there you go. Just Donna and that's it. Donna and they have a popular Jennifer and Russ Clark. The cat's here, too, so. He's right there. He doesn't say much, or she doesn't to, say much. I think he wants to say something. <clears throat> All right, so we have, if there's no public comment, next item is to review and approve the AP warrants and minutes from the July 17th and July 25th meeting. So let's take a look at that. I'll move that we accept the warrants for, this isn't right. Yep, but that's not that's not how these are dated. These are dated um, 7:29 for pay period payroll dated 8:1. Um, uh, 
The next one is um, a warrant dated 730, which isn't what's listed here. And the other one's dated 86 for a period of 88. So give me a minute. Six rescues report. So I move that we accept the payroll warrant dated July 29, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries four to zero. The next item is the warrant dated 7.30. The dates don't, the dates on the um, agenda don't match um, the warrants that are in the packet. So going forward, if we could have that match, that would be good. There's no dates on the agenda. Just the minutes dates the are on the agenda. Oh, my apologies then. Okay. so. I'll move that we accept the warrants dated 7-30-2024. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries, or any opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Next, warrant dated 8-6. I move that we accept the warrants dated 8-6-2024. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, are you ready for the question? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Bad, don't get old because then you have to wear bifocals like me. <laughs> okay, so the next one is the um, select board meeting minutes dated July 17, 2024. I move that we accept that as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, are you ready for the question? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Next is the minutes dated. Dated July 25th, 2024. I move that we accept them as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or any comments, concerns? Hearing none, are you ready for the question? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Maureen Collins, cold lip stain. So um, will Bob Stone aye. Patty Richards, aye. Dan Steinbauer, aye. And those opposed, zero. Any abstentions? Uh, Maureen Collins Cope. So the motion carries three zero to one. You know, I'm sorry. I'm actually I'm rereading this because it shows that I was absent and that I was present. Um, hmm. So I'm just noting. I think you were. Oh, it shows me absent too. Yeah. So I guess that's a, a note to um, make that correction. That I think we were both here, Patty. I think so too. Hang on a minute. Yeah. So do we want to want to amend that uh, vote? to remove Maureen from that members present. And to remove Patty Richards from the absent category. And I'm actually. I'm so there, is there a second to amend the minutes? Yeah, I was here. I'll second that. So motion to amend the minutes has been seconded. So we're voting on the packet based on the uh, change. So. Uh, we'll go through a roll call vote because it's not going to be unanimous. Um, you know, because the um, sorry, the note is that the amendment should be that both Patty and myself were present. Were present. I'm Correct. sorry. Yes. It has it's us just listed just both in attendance and absent. We so were both in attendance for that meeting. Yeah. Okay. So to be clear, 
we want to strike that Maureen and Patty were absent from the July 25th meeting. That's your second, right, Patty? Yes. Any other changes to the packet or the minutes dated July 25th? Are you ready for the question? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Oh, we'll do a roll call vote. Bob Stone, aye. Dan Steinbauer, aye. Maureen Collins Kolb, aye. Patty Richards, aye. Can you just mark that on the on the minutes itself, Bob? Just you're just, you're just scratching something out, right? Mm -hmm. Motion carries four to zero. Brad, I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> well, I'm just saying so we don't forget. <laughs> oh, for ice this is a small window. It's going to change in about 30 seconds, but right. yes. <laughs> I think that's all the minutes and warrants that I can muster for tonight. Excellent. Um, member items, correspondence, announcement schedule. The next regular schedule of select board meeting is scheduled for August 22. Um, anybody have anything? No. This is Jennifer. I have something. Well, welcome, Jennifer. Um, thank you. So I met with, um, with Kurt, and we did, he is developing it right now, three different um, kind of scenarios for our capital, 10-year capital outlook. And I would like to invite up to two board members to meet with Kurt, me, and Russ and set a date for early September, hopefully, so that we can start to look at where we're, where we'd like to head with our capital outlook. And that's important because it leads into our budget planning, which will start shortly after that. So I'm bringing it up tonight because I would like to see if there's two members, up to two members of the board that would like to sit in on the early stage of that so that we're getting board input as we take a look at long-term planning for vehicles and capital expenses. We'll send an email out to you letting you know which two um, but to be fair, um, we'll send an email out to the entire board and those that want to express interest will, you know, let Brad or I know. And then, you know, if there's more than two, then um, we will, I don't know, draw straws or figure something out, you know, type of thing, rock, paper, scissor it or something, but we'll let you know. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I just, um, you know what this is, right? Yeah. From friends, it's fire. Oh, right. Yeah. Never mind. Um, <laughs> it's fire. You don't remember that from friends? I'll have to send you the link. I just wanted to, I don't, I'd like to, for you all to keep your computers open um, when we're finished because I just want to check something out really quick. I'm just curious for how you're seeing the packet, but I just want to throw that in there. That so, was your one thing, Brad. Okay. You can have another one if you want. That's it. I'm good. So I had a schedule. We are. This is a this is how efficiency works right here in yeah. downtown Underhill. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Um, I don't know of anything else. No interpretive dances tonight. Um, it's sad to say that I move that we adjourn. I second. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Everybody?